message you're about listening to is from Pastor E. A. Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. In Ezekiel 37, verse 11 to 14, Ezekiel 37 from verse 11 to 14, the Bible says, God opened the graves, brought us out, the dead, brought us, the dead, out. And the Spirit of God in us caused us to live again. There is a God, the God of all flesh. Not only can he raise the dead, and thank God for the testimonies we have heard, he can reverse the irreversible. He can do something that will cause even the man with the greatest faith to say, only the Almighty can do this. I don't know if you had the testimony yet. There was a daughter of mine that the doctor said there's no way she could ever have a child. Relatives of the husband told her, stop worrying yourself. Your wife has no womb. You know the, test, you know the story. And then God spoke. He said, there's someone here. He said, you have no womb, but you are going to produce a set of twins. She knew she was the one, so she grabbed it. And she became pregnant. Went to the hospital. The doctor checked and said, I don't know what is happening. You are not supposed to be pregnant. But I see a baby in you. She said, no, not a baby. My father said, twins. Cut a long story short. Went back three months later. The doctor said, we, yes, we can see twins. She went abroad because they, they, they don't want to, anything to tamper with the baby to deliver. And they said, no, we don't want her to go through labor. Let this thing be by cesarean operation. So they put her to sleep and brought out the twins. And the husband told the doctor, I don't want any more child. This just seal the womb. We're okay now. When she woke up and everybody around were looking at her, what's going on? And she said, well, where, where are my children? They said, your children are over. But the surgeon said, I've performed thousands of operations. This is the first time I'm bringing out a set of twins where there is no womb. I'm sure you had the testimony before, at least those of you who are old, that's several years ago, almost 20 years ago now. But that's not the miracle now. I got a phone call from her not too long ago. Daddy, I want to bring my twins to greet you. I said, ah, good, bring them. I've not seen them for a long time. And she came. And I was expecting three twins who by now should be in the university. But she was carrying a brand new set of twins. The original ones are in the university. God, after years, brought out another two from somebody that they said had no womb, from somebody who had not menstruated at all. There is a God who can reverse the irreversible. Write down your prayer and say, Father, breathe on me. Restore to me every blessing I have lost and make 
the blessings double. Restore to me every blessing that I've lost, every opportunity that I've lost, and make them double. And then, point number four. Like that young man mentioned, breathing on me can be the beginning of Holy Ghost power. In John chapter 20, verse 21 to 23, John chapter 20, from verse 21 to 23, Jesus Christ said to the disciples, he said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. And then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. He said, the breath and breathing the Holy Ghost. Now the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 Acts chapter 1 verse 8 it says you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you you shall receive power. The word used for power there according to Bible scholars, is the word used for dynamite. Not ordinary power, the dynamite kind of power. The kind of power that can blow mountains out of the way. The kind of power that can shatter a rock. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So that just like the Father sent the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Fresh air is saying to you and I, from now on, we will receive power. Power to go about doing good. Power to begin to raise the dead. You heard the testimony of that young man. There are others. As a matter of fact, I was expecting quite a few of them who had raised the dead since the last time we met. By the next time we meet, you would have raised the dead too. <laughs> but when he's talking about fresh air, he's talking about peculiar power. You know, in Mark chapter 19, verse 11 to 12, sorry, Acts chapter 19, from verse 11 to 12, the Bible said God performed special miracles by the hand of Paul so that from his body, aprons and handkerchiefs were taken to the sick. The sick got healed and the demons left them. Each time I hear the testimonies of the handkerchiefs that we have blessed, the oil that we have blessed, being used to perform miracles, I thank God. But I have good news for you. Very soon. You will take that handkerchief and get all your members who were not present 
and ask them to come and lay their own handkerchief on that handkerchief. And the power will be multiplied. I am believing God for you that as you breathe in the power of God, the fresh air of God tonight, there will be so much power in you that the impossible will become easily possible. <laughs> I'm sure you remember the story of a girl, of a sister who was pregnant in America and the baby was too big to come naturally. And when the doctors wanted to consider her for operation, they tested the blood and they discovered that she had a very peculiar blood that if she's ever caught, she will bleed to death, that her blood can never clot. Her blood can never stop flowing. So they had a problem. What do we do? If we open her up, she will bleed to death and we will save the baby. If we don't open her up, the baby can't come out because she's too big. And the mother came. And I prayed. And the Lord said, anoint two handkerchiefs for her. I didn't know why it is true, but I did. She traveled to America, tied, uh, gave the daughter one of the handkerchiefs. By the following morning, the handkerchief had disappeared. They searched everywhere they couldn't find it. So she said, well, thank God I have two. So the second one, she tied it so tightly around the hand of the daughter that anybody who's going to remove this one will probably need to do something special. To cut a long story short, you know the testimony. The doctors have said we can no longer wait. By tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., we are going to perform an operation in order to save the baby. There's nothing else we can do. Well, the baby arrived at 9 a.m before they can perform the operation. I am believing God for you after this fresh air. Your handkerchiefs will perform extraordinary miracles. So your prayer number four, Father, please breathe on me. so that I can be empowered to overflowing. Breathe on me, so I can be empowered to overflowing. Number five. Fresh air could mean second wind. I explained that one to those who came to the Holy, uh, Holy Communion yesterday. I will explain it again because of those of you who are not around. I said, when you are running a long race, a marathon, occasionally you get to a stage where you are so tired you feel you could not continue. You almost stop. But as you are breathing heavily, somehow, a power you didn't know you had in you, a kind of reserve, will surge forward. And then you begin to run again, and you run stronger and faster, and finish the race successfully. That new surge of energy, we call it getting a second wind. 
I'm believing God for someone who is about to give up. Tonight you will get a second win. Maybe I give you one or two examples very quickly on that. In Joshua chapter 1, from verse 1 to 8, Joshua 1 from verse 1 to 8, God made some tremendous promises for Joshua. Nobody will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. That's what God told him. And then by the time, I mean, by the time we go to Joshua chapter 6, you see him performing very well. Joshua chapter 6. He was able to lead the people. They made just one shout and the wall of Jericho fell. But then came Joshua chapter 7. And we found Joshua on his face. Because a small city called Ai has defeated the whole nation of Israel. He, he didn't know what to do next. He was flat on his face. But then came Joshua chapter 8. You can read the whole story. And God gave him a second wind. And from that moment onward, Joshua never failed again. And then in Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 11. Thank you, Father. The fellow concerned will understand. The Lord said, you started a project, you abandoned it. You started it the second time, you abandoned it. You started it the third time, you abandoned it. Daddy asked me to tell you, start it again now. It will no longer be abandoned. In Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 11, the Almighty God, thank you, Father. Daddy said there's someone listening. He said the only way to save your life is to give you two brand new lungs. He said you can receive it right now. In Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 11, the Almighty God told Peter, from now on, you'll be catching men. No more fishing. And Peter was doing great. By the time you go to Matthew chapter 16, from verse 13 to 19, Matthew 16, from verse 13 to 19, he was getting revelation directly from God. But then came Matthew 26, from verse 69 to 75. Matthew 26, from verse 69 to 75, when he failed very badly. But then, in John chapter 21, from verse 1 to 19, John 21, from verse 1 to 19, he got fresh air. He got a second wind. And from then on, it was upward ever, downward never. So you're going to pray your prayer number five. Father, breathe on me. Give me a second chance. Give me a second wind so that I will never fail again. That brings us to point number six.
Maisha yako mean adding petrol to fire. <laughs> you know the Bible says in Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. He said, when the Lord comes, he was going to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So fresh air could mean you have had a dose of power before. Like Peter had in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4, that my son mentioned earlier on. In the day of Pentecost, power came. And with that first dose, Peter was able to go into action. His destiny was activated. He preached a single sermon and won 3,000 souls. With that single dose, it was powerful enough to make the lame walk. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 11. Acts 3, from verse 1 to 11. You know the story of the lame man by the beautiful gate. After which he preached another sermon, and he won 5,000 souls. Acts chapter 4, verse 4. Acts chapter 4, verse 4. And then, in Acts chapter 4, from verse 23 to 31, Acts 4, 23 to 31, the wind blew again a second time. The house was shaken. Peter got a second dose of power. And with that, he was able to preach yet another sermon. And he won multitudes. Second dose of power. Ah, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell somebody, he said, relax. That which is frightening you has been blown away. There is a redeemed Christian church of God very close to you. Join them for a life-changing experience in worship. on this same station at this time for another wonderful experience as Pastor E.A. Adeboye exposes the deep mysteries in the Word of God.